This is a Hickok Model 532 tube tester. I found this in a pile of junk at a swap meet probably about 10 years ago. It was a freebie. I didn't pay any money for it. Um, I think the previous owner pretty much uh, gave it up for dead because uh, the meter is obviously bad. Its needle was stuck about one-eighth away from zero so it was in a stuck position which usually indicates that the meter movement is just bad. Replacement meter movements for these Hickok testers are quite expensive and hard to come by. Uh, they're not making any making them anymore. There really isn't any panel meters uh, that use these type of meters uh, or any equipment that use these type of meters other than Hickok. So as a result, uh, they're pretty hard to find. Okay, what I have here is a Hickok branded meter. It's not the same one that goes in that tester. It has a it has a um, full scale reading of 50 microamps. So um, the original meter is a 1.4 uh, milliamp meter uh, that uh, is has a resistance of 80 ohms. This one is a 50 microamp meter and has a resistance of 1950 ohms. So what is necessary is to mod the meter or you know mod things a little bit so you can get this meter to behave somewhat similarly to the original meter that is in that 532 tube tester. So what I did was I used a bit of Ohm's law and I determined that an 82 ohm resistor across the terminals would be sufficient to make this meter behave like the original uh, tube tester meter. Okay, here is the interior of the tube tester. Um, what I've done here is I've taken that meter that I just showed you and I've kind of uh, I've taken the original meter off and I've put that meter in and you know you can see the shunt resistor that I put in there the 82 ohm resistor uh, with this mod this meter should behave more or less like the original meter did it's not as large as the original meter but the idea is that um, if I can prove that it works I can then use the original meter face and scan it in and then uh, reduce it in uh, a graphics program on my computer and then put a new meter face on this meter here um, so I can get a meter that uh, behaves and looks more or less like the original meter. Alright, here is the uh, 532 and I've plugged it in and it's got the replacement meter here. Of course it doesn't look right because it's uh, not the right size but it should behave similarly to the original meter because I did the mod on it. Anyway, I'll turn it on. Okay, it powers up. You can see the pilot light come on right here. Um, so what we need to do is see if um, see if the meter moves when we do a line 
adjustment test. You press the line adjustment button here, which is button P7. Okay, the meter is moving. You can kind of see it there. Now let's see if adjusting the line adjustment control here will bring that up a little bit. I'll bring it up to halfway and then press the button again. Ah, uh, yes. Okay, it's about mid-scale, which is a good sign. That means that we have a meter that's behaving more or less like the original meter. Alright, we now have a Type 42 tube in there. The appropriate socket. And I've set the controls to accommodate that tube uh, you know to uh, the settings are in accordance with what you find on the tube chart here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it on and turn the light off for just a minute yeah you can see that we're getting a filament there. So filament's lighting up. So we're gonna do the shorts test. Getting a brief light there. I don't think that's anything to worry about. Okay, we're gonna turn that. Now we're actually going to test the tube, see how it behaves in the tester. We'll check the line adjustment first. It should be up, should come out to about the middle, and it does. Okay, now it says the tester says to press P4. I've got it on the English scale, which is uh, the replace or uh, good scale. Uh, it's, a, it's like a go, no go test scale. Okay, I'm going to press the P4 button here to test it. We'll see if the meter moves. Uh, yes, it does. And it appears to be well in the good range, which is about what I would expect. I think this tube is a good tube. Okay. Now, there's also... Another thing on the chart that says that the mutual conductance for this, if you don't, if you want to test the actual conductance, it should be within about 2,000. So we're going to put it, going to put the control to the 3,000 scale and try to press the button again. And I'm pressing the button and nothing is happening. That's a problem because uh, there has to be some issue with the tester because um, it shouldn't register okay on the English scale and then register completely dead on the one of the uh, micromo scales, uh, you know, the conductance scales. Um, that should never happen. Uh, if, and the tube is good, so we've got some work to do on this tester. Okay, uh, this is the original meter here. Um, I'm going to take it apart and uh, take the uh, meter face off so I can uh, uh, scan in the meter scale and then uh, reduce it in a graphics program so I can get it to fit on the replacement meter. Um, before I do that I'm going to test it to see what the resistance of this meter really is. Okay I've got this probes on there. Seems to be showing infinite resistance which means that this original meter not only is it stuck in a position, but it's also bad. Uh, it's open. 
Uh, this is not good, but we're going to replace the meter anyway, so no biggie. Okay, now I've taken the meter apart. Okay, this is the scale that I'm going to reproduce. This is the body of the meter. It's pretty much has all its pieces removed now. And this is the meter scale, or this is the actual meter. And I made a couple of interesting discoveries. I was able to break the movement free. Um, it was sticking and somehow whatever was, I moved the meter needle a few times manually, very gently and I got that broken free. Um, so that's kind of interesting. It was stuck seemingly permanently in the 1 8 above zero scale when it was fully assembled and now it seems to have broken free. Um, the other interesting discovery that I made is that when you test the continuity of the meter movement, the meter will move, the meter actually moves and it registers a resistance of 64.1 ohms. Take the meter, or take the um, digital voltmeter off and it comes back to zero position. Put it back on and the meter wiggles again. So apparently this meter movement is not open. Now, how is it possible that I was able to measure it uh, with the case on and have it... Um, be open and now that I've got it fully apart it's registering resistance. Well apparently inside this meter is a resistor in series here that is wire, round, wire wound. It's a custom wire wound resistor precision one um, wound on a spool. Now, when I uh, when I do a resistance check of this, okay, put my other probe on the other side here. It registers infinite ohms. It's open, so it's actually the resistor and not the uh, meter movement that's open. So that's interesting because it changes my strategy for this. Um, all I have to do, okay, the meter, uh, my DVM indicated that this movement had somewhere around 65 or 66 ohms. Um, I'll measure it again. Okay, 64.2, 64.1, somewhere in there. Um, what that means is that there's... This is a series resistor, so in order to get 80 ohms, I would be getting a resistor that's somewhere between 15 and 16 ohms and put it in series. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace this with a standard uh, probably a 1% resistor and put the meter back together and see what happens. Okay, I have the uh, meter 
movement partially assembled in its case uh, with the the new 15 ohm resistor in series with it and I'm going to test it right now and measure the resistance with the meter okay you can see the the needles moving it's got a resistance of according to this DVM it's got a resistance of 81.3 ohms which is pretty close to the original meter or what what it should have been so alright so I'm going to put the face back on and the other pieces and we'll give it a final test alright one final check out before I put the meter back in the tester it's completely assembled now there we go we have a good meter there alright so I'll put it in the tester and we'll do a check out okay here is the meter the refurbished meter movement in the tube tester okay it's installed in there now so we're gonna do a check to see if it actually works so what I have I have the same number 42 tube that I had in the previous test and I've got the line line adjust pot adjusted to about the same place it was um, in the previous test so what I'm going to do is I'm going to press the line adjust button look at the meter and it works it seems to work just fine so we're testing it a few times okay now going to do the test for uh, testing the tube and that seems to be pretty good so now I know this isn't going to work but I'm going to try it anyway I'll move this over to the uh, mutual conductance scale uh, and try it again and it's dead and I'm I'm that's expected because it wasn't working with the other meter either okay but this is this is a pretty good start I'm really amazed I did not think I did not think that this thing was that meter was ever going to be able to re be resurrected uh, but I was wrong okay well I've been looking at the schematic trying to figure out what could be possibly causing the mutual conductance scales not to work even though the English scale on the tester does work didn't seem to make a lot of sense to me um, now the what I discovered is that there's a bunch of resistors in that uh, micro Mo's switch assembly that uh, uh, they're in series and they switch in and out depending on uh, the setting of the micro Mo's switch now what I discovered is that every one of these resistors here there are all these wire wound spool resistors just like the ones inside that meter that I just fixed uh, what I discovered is that every one of them appears to have continuity but this one so this one is open kinda like the um, resistor that I just replaced in that meter uh, so looking a little bit closer it's hard to tell uh, from this angle I found out that there was a wire 
Uh, it's really hard to see it, but there's a wire right there that is just, gosh, I wish I could see it better, uh, that is just hanging out there. And you'll notice that if you look, this is loose, indicating that one winding on that resistor has slackened, which means that the wire has come loose. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reattach that and see if I get continuity again. Okay, I managed to get the broken wire on that spool resistor that I just showed you uh, resoldered. So now we're going to do another functional test of this thing and see if the micromo scale came back. Okay, first of all we'll do a line check and we're getting normal meter action there. And we're on the English scale now. We're going to do a tube test of the 42 tube that we've been using as a test subject here. And that seems to work pretty good. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to move this over to... It's, it's supposed to be at least 2,000 on the mutual conductance scales. So what we're going to do is move it to the 3000 scale on the, uh, you're going to move the knob to the 3000 setting. So the scale here is going to be the max at 3000. So I'll push the button now and if this thing, f if that uh, resistor repair fix this, then it should deflect the meter now. And it does. It works. And it's reading about 27, looks like about 27, 2750 on the mutual conductance scale. Now we'll bring it, we'll bring it up to the 6000 scale just to see. It should read about half scale or thereabouts. And it does. Yeah, it's reading about 2,700, 2,800, just like it was on the other one. Okay, we'll do the 15,000 scale. And this should be pretty low. It should be in the first quarter or something. Yep, and it does. We're good. All right, looks like, looks like it's fixed. Now the power cord on this thing really sucks. It's it's literally breaking apart and I'm taking a big chance even running this tester with that power cord. Uh, you know, the insulation is really bad. It's it's hardened. So I'm going to turn this tester off and I'll consider this repair a success. I'll probably do some final checkouts, you know, checking the uh, resistance of all the uh, resistors to make sure they haven't drifted but uh, I consider this one to be quite a success I really was I'm kind of amazed I really wasn't expecting uh, that meter uh, to be repairable it, it looked like a basket case the whole tester looked like a basket case but uh, yeah it works fine I'm quite happy.